I can't agree with that sentiment more. Be excellent to each other and party on, dude. Yeah, crowd is going crazy today. They want more Mortar for Andrew. It's very possible Mortar, one of the best counters to this Lightning Beatdown meta that we've kind of seen come into the meta here, but it is not gonna be that. It's gonna be minor poison at the top, and we have Hog EQ at the bottom from Pandora. So Air Surfer has played some minor Mortar Poison already today. Mm. Go ahead, Jackson. I was gonna say, so it is possible potentially, but we do see the delivery drop. So this is a fairly more defensive version. I think a lot of time when we see that delivery, a lot of the time it's not gonna be paired with the Mortar. More often than not gonna be with a Tesla or a Bomb Tower. And of course, this game one is often heavily planned out with coaches and Air Surfer working with the with Alan, who's been quite excitable this weekend, and Pandora, backed by Arimura, who of course was a World Championship coach with Moogie in 2021. So we actually see the Inferno Tower come out from Air Surfer. We saw yesterday the Inferno Tower getting massive value versus big beatdown decks like the Giant and the Bowler. But that's only when you do not have a Lightning or a Reset in your deck. In this situation, it's not going to be super optimal. A lot of the time, it's going to get some negative Lictor Trades versus that Hog Rider. And the Miner will reset, turn towards that Skeleton for a shot, but continue being just outside of that Tesla range, damage lead for Air Surfer as we approach double elixir time. <laughs> Air Surfer, last card here, I would assume it, it's poison. It is possible that it's rocket. Either way, Air Surfer having a decent matchup here. He just needs to make sure to watch out for this three card cycle. Hog Rider down with the Mighty Miner tanking. Inferno Tower drops. There is an evil Firecracker and an Earthquake coming down. That Hog is gonna be back in cycle right away. And the Mighty Miner not able to protect the first Hog Rider. Second Hog Rider in though, two Knights going to work. Firecracker will get some chip log behind all of that. 1906 now add a bit more, 1720. And a big lead for Pandora, Air Surfer, trying to push the opposite direction. Can he get on tower here? Pandora's micro in this last interaction was so perfect. Not great here. Evo Knight getting three shots on tower, evening this game up quite nicely. But a big hog shot the opposite direction. 1715, let that poison tick away as the miner comes in. Log to support. Firecracker in the middle. Does it get? No. Ice Spirit jumps over and the skeleton's well timed. Wait, that was the last poison tick. And there you go. The miner going to get a ton of damage here. Hog Rider inbound. Inferno Tower is in cycle. Earthquake will not drop. He wants to save his elixir and he wants to get to another round of Hog Rider. He needs to out cycle this Inferno Tower for a chance of damage. But what about the evil Firecracker? It's on tower. And there you go. The long shot. Getting the left-hand tower down very low, 1120. Log plus poison, opposite direction, 146 remaining. Will this hog get through? No. Inferno tower high to control. Another hog rider inbound with a three-card cycle. Knight on defense, but he doesn't have Inferno tower. Log comes down. Mighty Miner is still tanking, though. Even with the king tower, hog oh, getting two word. shots. One or two more earthquakes to finish off the match. And Air Surfer just cycling poison quickly, but... This will be a hard foot race for him to win. Tesla in, log opposite direction. GG, well played. Pandora takes game number one. Pandora is so underrated. And I said that at the very beginning of the day number one of the Clash Royale League. He's the most underrated player in the Clash Royale League. And the thing I want to talk about is his micro. It's time for Little Prince out of Pandora. Little Prince definitely could get some value here. Maybe Air Surfer will have a Lightning to deal with it, but that's a very negative Elixir trade. And maybe Air Surfer going with the Goblin Giant Lightning Rage here. Alternatively, well, now with the Goblin Gang. Yeah, Goblin Gang is going to be a little bit more ambiguous. Could be some sort of bait deck with the Goblin Giant as well. We see the Little Prince, you called a Rage. And from Pandora's side, looking like Splash Art, potentially E-Giant could be an option as well. And this is what I anticipated was Pandora running Little Prince now with Poison in the delivery out and the peanut gallery happy to see the bowler. That big third purple man, I mean, he is uh, a menace to deal with in the current Clash Royale meta. He counters the Little Prince so well and he's so good on offense just like this. And here we go, early Goblin Giant Bowler Rage push. The stone does not quite get far enough to impact that tombstone and 
That's a funky NATO to start things off. And the Barbaro is going to be forced out as well. So immediate obsolete Gobba Gang from Air Surfer. Pandora does kind of control with the little Prince, but he's down a lot of Elixir. Down a significant margin as we pass the midway point of regulation time. The lead, just chip damage so far for Air Surfer, but with that Elixir lead, happy to split Archers in the back and begin getting that evolution and cycle. Holy. Bowler in the back as well. Pandora leaking a little bit of Elixir, and he decides to drop that Knight. He wants to get the Evo Knight in cycle in order to at least be able to counter the Evo Archers by tanking them. Considering how aggressive lots of the play has been so far in this tournament, Jackson, we're seeing some very slow play from these two players in the stage. I think we're going to see it pick up a little bit in this double elixir. Poison going to come out from Pandora on top of this little Prince. Bar Barrel on the boulder and immediate Goblin Gang pressure off the lane. This does force out the Evo Knight. Air Surfer's going to have Evo Archers, though, to counter this Evo Knight and then counter push off of that. And the Spears get some damage on the right hand lane, so. As we approach the last 30 seconds, the lead extends. Poison actually wow. to be able to catch that evil archer, taking them off the board. Baby Dragon gonna get cleaned up by the Little Prince as well. And I think the biggest thing to mention here is the boulder potential value versus this Tombstone. Tombstone is so imperative versus these defenses, but as we see here, Bowler taking that Tombstone oh, out, boy. and this defense becomes a lot more difficult immediately. Little Prince going to work on the back. Air Surfer opting not to call in the Guardian. And has taken a reset and the Elixir advantage and not going to bite. Wow. Right there at the end, the Guardian comes out and gets right on tower. Guardian getting so much damage by the Knights back in hand, but this is going to be a nice bowler value from Air Surfer. Rage can help kill this Baby Dragon as well. Bowler does not quite reach that tower, still doing some good damage to the Little Prince and the Knight. And now, the Guardian being knocked back as well. Fish boy for some separation. Yeah, and here comes another Goblin Giant, though, with the initial Boulder Little Prince at the bridge. This push is looking scary. Nato pulls back, but he's only got a Baby Giant for defense. And here comes the Goblin Gang in the opposite lane as well. Pandora, somehow, some way, making this defense look very solid. But so much damage given up. 11.35 right-hand lane, 13.48 left-hand lane, and Air Surfer so far nearly perfect on his side of the board. Yeah, and that's the thing. Pandora can have these decent defenses where he doesn't lose his tower, but he needs to get damage in this final moment. But that's so hard to do when Air Server is so precise with lightnings like that. And when does Pandora even go in with Graveyard? Because not only do you have the archers, but you also have the Goblin Gang to backstop those archers if you need them offense. Goblin Gang and that little Prince is tough because a lot of times you're needing the poison on defense as well. He decides to go for the Graveyard. He gets the poison down, but like you said, the archers are there and the damage is not going to be done. And raged up Goblin Giant on the right hand side, going to make that tower even more suspect. Push into the right hand lane, 25 seconds left. Poison a little bit high here. Nato pulls all of that inside, but that's decent enough defense. Air Surfer looking like he's gonna take game number two. 14 seconds left on the clock. We see a Goblin Giant at the bridge. Baby Giant Graveheart is not gonna make it through. Tombstone on defense. Goblin Giant coming through. The defense is easy. Pandora calls a good game. He knows it's over. Air Surfer taking the game number two and forcing to game three. What a pick in game number two for Air Surfer. You know, we've seen a lot of this Goblin Giant Bowler Rage, but having both Gang and Archers together really covered phenomenally against the Graveyard. Well, it's always a possibility, boys. And once again, the gold rains down for Air Surfer, who opens up very fast cycle, looking like it might be Hog out of Air Surfer here in game three. Yeah, Hog. It makes sense. He has that earthquake open, like you mentioned. Fireball out from Pandora. Interesting deck. Maybe Pandora is going to use some Goblin Giant of his own in this game three. Certainly happy to have the fireball here for that evolved firecracker when it comes out. Hog goes to the right hand side. Fish Boy for the pull. Snowball makes a little bit of room on the minions. Wow. And they, you know, for a second you think maybe they'll prevent the King Tower activation. They do not. Either way, first blood drawn. Yeah, that was exactly my thought. If Air Shiffer didn't play that snowball, the minions would have done enough damage to prevent the King Tower activation. But that one snowball 
as it seemed good, it actually went against him in this situation. And an interesting rage choice here out of Pandora. Talk to me about playing rage there. Was that just to clear the board? That seems, I guess he has plenty of elixir, but it seemed a little bit extra. Yeah, I think you're right. Maybe if he delayed a little bit, he could have got the Goblin Giant a little bit more value. Maybe he could have taken out that Firecracker as well. Bomb Tower down on defense from Air Surfer. This is a tough push to deal with. He doesn't have the Mighty Miner in cycle, but at least he has this evil Firecracker. Do we see a King Tower activation out of Air Surfer here? Yes, we do. Will Skelly's get there? Pull. No, not quite. Evil Firecracker getting a lot of value, almost too much value, doing a lot of damage. Once again, preventing that King Tower activation with too much damage here. He wants to protect his Evil Firecracker, but it goes in front, and the Fisherman is able to pull everything here. No, this Evil Firecracker is still alive. And that's going to be some potentially really valuable damage here as that right hand tower gets down to 1995. And the Firecracker down on the defense versus these Evil Archers. Evil Archers Oof. knocking back some solid damage as well. Here comes a Hog Rider from Air Surfer when he's down Elixir. Maybe he can get this Mighty Miner to defend this Mega Knight, though. And Hog Rider gets a shot. That is a huge shot, 2308 to 1677. He has to be worried, though, about the potential Fisherman play. And the damage on the Mighty Miner is significant. Mega Knight's gonna leap. Fire Spirit to pull, Skeletons to hold. He has to control here and back to Bomb Tower one more time after taking a deep breath. Deep breath, Bomb Tower's down, but you have to be careful. You need to cycle back to another Bomb Tower ASAP to deal with this next push. He's gonna apply pressure in the opposite lane to make it a little bit more difficult, but the Fisherman does a great job of pulling that Hog Rider and kind of pushing to the lane he wants. Mega Knight getting into a bridge fight here with the Mighty Miner. Coverage there prevents the Fisherman from doing much else. Fireball to clear off the evolved Firecracker as we go into Sudden Death Overtime. Lead for Air Surfer in this win or go home matchup, 1984 to 1301. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I have to point out there is $15,000 on the line for this match of Clash Royale. And the nerves are starting to show themselves a little bit, but with these double firecrackers here, the fireball getting a lot of value. And now here we go, the rage. Fire Spirit hoping to get the minions off the board. Evo Firecracker barely survives. Hog Rider in. Fisherman placed. Was it in time? And it was. I don't believe that Hog gets a shot. Well done by Pandora. Eva Firecracker not gonna hit the right hand lane tower, and this fisherman is going to be. No! Great skeletons there, preventing the Mighty Miner from being pulled onto his side of the map. So far with the lead. What a Mega Knight. That Mega Knight wow. jumping over the river on top of the bomb tower. He's trying to pull this Mega Knight to King, but he gets the bomb tower to defend the Goblin Giant. There's just too much going on. Minions oh, locked on tower. Goblin Giant. That's so much damage. Fireball in. Fisherman there. And Pandora does it. He goes through to our top three. GG's well played. Pandora knocking out his good friend, Air Surfer. A sigh of relief. I mean, he is going to stay in it. And now he just awaits the final winner bracket match to see who his loser bracket final opponent will be. Wow, what a gutsy performance by Pandora there. Air Surfer